welcome to Mean Brews. It's been a while since our last video, been in the midst of competition planning, but here we're today we're going to do Munich Helles, which in German means bright, which reflects the color of the beer. Let's get right into the data. I have 24 winning Munich Helles recipes. I've got three best of show recipes, 14 golds, four silver, one bronze, and two that were so old all I had was an award winning. Uh, BJCP style is for a, a clean, malty, gold-colored German lager with a smooth, grainy, sweet, malty flavor and a soft, dry finish. Subtle, spicy, floral, and herbal ops, hops and restrained bitterness help keep the balance malty but not sweet, which helps make this beer a refreshing, everyday drink. Uh, quite surprising on this one, but we're seeing some evolution, and I'll walk through those variables that are changing with time. Um, but the difference between recipes is pretty minimal. Uh, big surprise here on the first, on the original gravity for competitions. Uh, the mean was 1.050, and the lowest um, in my data set was right at the peak 1.048 of the BJCP range. So surprisingly, people are winning with uh, higher gravity than what BJCP specifies. Perhaps BJCP should be updated. IBUs, uh, not a big surprise here. Mean was 18. Um, we're seeing anywhere from 12 to 25 on the range uh, from entrants that are winning. Um, so not a big surprise here. We do see some change over time. Um, I think the hops, the IBUs are going up uh, from 2000 to 2020. Um, probably about, what, 10, 10 20% percent delta there. Um, probably reflecting the change in tastes. People are drinking more IPAs, and uh, those hops are show wanting to be showcased in other styles as well. It's kind of migrating over to the other styles. At least that's my explanation for it. Uh, if you have any ideas on why most of these styles are getting hoppier with time, I'd like to hear it in the comments, please. Uh, color, well within the range between 3 to 5. The average was 4.3. Um, the malt percentages, 95.6% base malt, 3.2% crystal. 0.8% toast, and 0.4% adjunct. For the base malts, the most prominent was Pilsner malt. 100% of the recipes used Pilsner malt at an average rate of 88% of the grist. And Munich was next. 54% of the recipes used Munich at an average of 10.7% of the grist. Uh, Vienna, 29% of the recipes used a Vienna malt at 11% of the grist. And then there's one recipe that used a wheat, uh, wheat malt at 5% of the grist, but we'll discount that as an anomaly. All the other malts, most prominent is Carapils. 42% of the recipes use the Carapils at an average of 6.6% .6 of the grist. Next most prominent, Melanoidin. 38% of the recipes use Melanoidin at an average of 2% of the grist. Then Light Crystal, this is 10 through 40, more so on the 10 than the 40. 13% of the recipes use the Light Crystal Average of 3.8% of the grist. That's not enough from, uh, above the threshold for me to consider using it in my recipe. I usually tend somewhere around a third of the recipes using that malt before I'll consider using it. I also uh, was a torrefied wheat uh, and a biscuit malt in here. The biscuit was about 1%. The torrefied wheat was right at um, 9%. Both not prominent enough to, to warrant using in, in your uh, recipes. Malt evolution, these are the specific malts. Um, some notable evolution of quantities of malt used. Um, here I'm plotting uh, Carapils and Munich malt, and both of those are trending down to nothing. Um, I'm gonna keep mine right at about 5% for Munich and about 2.5% for Carapils. So I will include those because they're pretty prominent, but I am not gonna be on the high side here. Um, mostly Pilsner malt for my recipe. Uh, type of malts, um, here we're plotting the blue line as crystal and the orange line as toast malts. Toasts are kind of creeping in 1-2% to 2 from nothing and crystal malts starting up here as high as 19%, trending down to 1-2%. to 2%. Um, So you'll see that reflected in my recipe. I'm not putting any toasted malts. I am putting melanoid in here at about 2% and the only crystal malt I'm putting in is carapils. Um, right at about the same, 2.2%, 2.5%. Bittering hops, Hallertaler again, also 
uh, both prominently used and some other German style uh, hops used as bittering hops. I'm going to use Haller Middle Fru for my bittering hops for my recipe. Flavor hops, only 25% of the recipes use flavor hops. I'm not going to include in my recipe, but if you are going to use them, uh, the German or Czech styles here were used, uh, sorry for the spelling error here, uh, German or Czech styles prominent here for this style. Aroma hops, 58% of the recipes used aroma hops. Haller Middle Fru was the clear winner, followed by Sotz, Herzbrucker, and Haller Blanc. Now the rate of hop additions, um, whoops, let's go back. So I guess I didn't put averages here, but we can read them. Uh, flavor hops, uh, right at 20, what did I say, 25% of the recipes used flavor hop. Somewhere between 0.12 ounces per gallon at that rate was the average. And then for aroma hops, 58% again used aroma hops at around 0.15 ounce per gallon. Uh, I will put aroma hops in, I'll put some middle fruit in at, at this rate. For a 5.5 gallon batch, that's about 0.8 ounces. Uh, so that's something I will add for this style. <laughs> Late hop evolution. This is uh, trending down as well. So earlier on, uh, both all the recipes pretty much use flavor, late edition hops, and that's going down to very few of them. 50% here and 30, 25% here, let's say 15% here. So big reduction in both flavor and aroma hops in the late hop editions. There were no dry hops or whirlpool for this style, of course. Water chemistry, um, I'll just go through the averages. About 62% for calcium, a little less than 10% for magnesium. Sodium pretty high, uh, 22% sodium was the average. These are the ranges, these orange bars. Sulfate right at 50 and um, chloride right at 80, which gives it a, a chloride uh, imbalance, which is prominent for malty styles. And then um, carbonates were all over the place. Um, I typically just keep, keep them less than 100 if you can. Uh, mash types, 52%. Uh, 62% of the recipes used a, a temperature mash with 10% of the total being the decoction. 38% did use single infusion, so you can make a good winning beer with a single infusion mash. Uh, the mash rests. We'll start out with the acid rest. Uh, 102 was the temperature average for the acid rest. Uh, 126 for the protein rest. And about 50% of the recipes used a protein rest. Um, beta rest, about 42, 43% of the recipes used a beta rest at 147F. And they all use the main sacrification rest at average of 154. This is that German, I'll butcher the name, German mash schedule where you mash low in the, in the mid to low 140s and the mid, mid to high 150s. I would recommend these three steps uh, in your mash schedule. Boil duration, boil was at 82 minutes, average. Um, I'm gonna keep it right there. I think, you know, with DMS, probably seeing an evolution of, of this coming down to just a standard 60 minute boil with the well-modified malts that we have nowadays. Yeast used, um, surprisingly 838 was the most prominent yeast for this uh, style of beer, followed by 820 and a host of other German and even American style um, yeasts. Um, so my recommendation will be to use 838. Did see a big change from uh, the blue line is uh, 820, 2206 is Oktoberfest strain, and 838 is the orange line. Um, trending big is the orange line being more prominent to win than the Oktoberfest strain. So my recipe again will use the 838 from uh, White Labs or uh, 2308 from Y Yeast. Fermentation temperature, we had one fermented down at 38, so I threw out the high and the low. Um, the average was 49, but when you took out the high-low, it's average of 50F, um, so I'm going to shoot for 50 degrees. Other variables, the average carbonation volume was 2.55, this was trending up. Um, the average pH was 5.33, and this was trending down. So again, some evolution there. I won't plot them, there weren't enough data points, but... Um, I've heard that German, light German styles, you want to be on the lower end of pH. Uh, some, some even mash in the fours. Um, so you'll see, I, I'm right at 5.3, but I think you could go even lower and be fine. All right, my recipe, I'm going to recommend 90.3% uh, Pilsner malt, 
5% Munich malt, 2.5 Carapils or Dextrin malt, Carafoam if you're using Weiermann malts, 2.2% uh, Melanoidin, that's my grist. Uh, I'm going to put 16 IBUs at 60 minutes of Hallertal Middle Fru. Then I'm going to add 0 0.15 ounce per gallon at uh, 5 minutes. Uh, my yeast I'm going to use 838. I'm going to shoot for 1.050 and 18.2 IBUs. For my water chemistry, I'm going to get as close to this. This won't balance out, but these were the averages. 62 parts per million calcium, 9.5 magnesium, 22 sodium, uh, 40 sulfate, and 80 chloride. Shoot for a mash pH of 5.3. If you want to follow the Reheinsgebot, use your acid malts in place of the Pilsner malt to adjust your pH. Or um, your favorite acid if you don't care about the Reheinsgebot. Sparge as usual and boil for 80 minutes. I'm going to chill to 49. Uh, oxygenate and pitch big. And I'm going to ferment at 50 and raise it a little bit towards the end of fermentation for a diacetyl rest. And I'm going to cold crash. Um, and then I'm going to car carb it to 2.6 volumes. We'll go back. I didn't put the uh, mash rest in here, so we'll touch on that again. I missed that in the recipe. I'll put it in the text in the, in the uh, um, video. So I will do a protein rest, 15-minute protein rest, 126 and then split a 30-minute rest at 147 and a 30-minute rest at 154. Um, if, you can't, um, if you can't step mash or decoction, shoot for about 150. Hit the middle between these two, and you should be okay. I don't really think the style needs a protein rest, but obviously it's doing something. People are using it. Um, it's been consistent over time, so I will include it in this recipe. And that's it, guys. That's the end of the video for today. Um, Next video is up to you guys. Uh, put in the comments what you want to hear, what you want to see, uh, what style. Uh, we did Imperial Stouts, so Stouts are, are, are still on the table, but uh, big one's done. Let me know what you want to see. Pick an, an oddball, oddball style. Let's do something different. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. This episode is brought to you by the Master Home Brewer Program. Earn awards and badges based upon how you score in homebrewing competitions across the world. Sign up now at cialers.org.